Okay, so Lala, I love. I love everyone. I love all of my clients. But when, so did you come to a Get Social Breakfast Club? Is that the first? Basically, when La La booked into something, I squealed and like oh. fangirled and was like, oh my God, she's coming to my workshop. Ah. And then I was nervous and like have always really admired because La La's an OG. Like she looks 20, but <laughs> La La's an OG businesswoman in Perth. So much knowledge to offer. Run, like you run your business so well. Every single minor detail that you would ever think about, La La thinks about. And I just think that's so admirable because the only way you get that is from experience. You can't, you can't speed up that process. No. That's experience. And experience is something that you can't buy and yeah, you can't get quickly. You just got to live it. So um, then when Lala wanted to do the Social Club Plus program, all the feels happened again. And I was like, ah, what am I going to teach Lala? But anyway, Lala, <laughs> tell us, tell the people. So you have a couple of businesses now. I do. I've had to change my elevator pitch because of it. Yeah. So yes. well, talk us through the journey. Like, I, I, actually, okay. there was a question I wanted to ask right. you. When you were a kid, <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, I actually wanted to be a professional dancer and I got a scholarship when I was 16. Shut up! Mm. What yeah. kind of dance? Uh, classical ballet and contemporary. Shut up! Yeah, you wouldn't know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lala the ballerina. I know. Oh, yeah. there's still time. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that ship has sailed? Yeah, and what it is, I looked at um, my two teachers, my contemporary, I was actually dancing for Chrissy Parrott, who was a very big contemporary um, choreographer back here in Perth, and my ballet teacher, and I looked at them and they were both in their 30s, and my ballet teacher was almost crippled, and both of them were poor. Like they right. were driving bunkies and they were struggling to make an income. I was like, okay, I really need to rethink this. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's other yeah. options. Yeah. 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 And then I spent most of my working life as a young person in restaurants, running, running restaurants. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that obviously, just that customer service and yeah. organisation and high intensity environment would have had a huge impact. Yeah. So tell us your journey then, how you went from ballerina to <laughs> what you're doing now. I would never call it a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at that time, they don't know that. <laughs> so I spent most of my working life in restaurants, running people's restaurants, mm -hmm. like some of the best ones in Perth. So I did that up until I was probably 30. Mm -hmm. So I'm 50 this year. So it's been a bit of a journey. But what did I say? I was like, she looks 20, right? <laughs> Good um, jeans. So yeah, when I hit 30, I hit a brick wall. Really? I'd been running people's restaurants 90, 100 hours a week and I just went like that and mm. just died. I spent two years locked in my house with extreme agoraphobia and chronic depression. No suffered way. thyroid problems, which I still live with on a daily basis. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I was healthy. I had just burnt through my body. I burnt through my adrenal glands mm. and just trashed myself. And then I came out of it. And part of the therapy of getting better was making things. So I was making little bits of jewellery and bits and pieces. How and did you d decide to do that? Was, um, it was just someone told I you to do no, that? I, I just know I needed to do something creative. Okay. You, you know, you can't sit between your house in your full like walls and yeah. you know what am I going to do so yeah I just started to do something. Were you married then um, your last partner was that then? I've had a few husbands. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently on my first. Yeah <laughs> and I like to say that the current Mr Lala is my favourite. Okay yeah. well, that's good. That's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> Took a while to get there so yeah I was Third time's married job. at that time. <laughs> It is one of my secrets. Welcome out. to relationships <laughs> at the social club. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, and yeah, um, what happened when I finally started to lift my head up is um, a friend was getting married and said, I need some help with my wedding. And part of that was actually stationery. Back then, when you made wedding station, you would go into a paper shop and there would be lines of paper on the, on the shelf, you just got nods, and you would pick out papers and glue them together and do all this kind of thing. So we were doing this journey. And I remember sort of just sitting back going, oh, there's no service. There was mm. no, like, no one was helpful. N the stuff was really naff, mm. like, and nothing matched. I'm like, why do you have to go to 500 different shops to get something to work? Mm. And then I just went, I reckon this has got, like, this is what I think I'd like to do as a small business. So I actually started in the Subiaco markets, Did which has you? only just been the one on 
not Station Street, the one on this side on Rockaby Road. Rockaby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I started there with like a little shop that you could put your hands on. Mm -hmm. And I was there for six months. So I worked the weekend and then worked full time in my that current husband's business. <laughs> wow. And then, um, yeah. Decided to go into it full time, just jumped in, maxed all my credit cards out, but no business plan together. Had no idea about marketing, just went, yeah, fuck it, I'm doing it. And when was this? That was 2003. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So, no, once again, no social media. No. No Yellow in, pages, no, community newspaper, and a retail store. Yeah. Thing. There not was internet in 2003, but not really websites. No, People didn't I have websites. I think website kicked in like a year later. Yeah. Yeah, and I had some, like, you know, one of my staff members, her husband was yeah, a real techie like, dude, uh, so he just kind of made me something. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And our mailing list was a snail mail. We would lick and stick a thousand envelopes and post them out every three months. And you would cut out your little coupon and come on in and claim your little yeah, freebie. Yeah, what was it? What, you would what get did like you little send? craft part. We would send you a newsletter and at the bottom it said, cut this off and come in and we'll give you a little freebie pack. And we would make up little craft packs and stuff because they would come into the shop and then they'd spend their money. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we used to do that every three months. Wow. Yeah, you'd get a pink envelope in your letterbox. And I'm teaching you guys about email newsletters and you're like, oh, do I have to? You want to do that instead? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. So then we had the last La La um, design store. So I had a retail storefront up until three years ago. Yeah. Talk to Austin us about Street the Leadable. decision of Yeah. Probably that. one of the hardest decisions I've yeah. had to make. And I had a huge emotional ride through it. So at that point, it was about a 280 square meter shop, probably close to 300 grand's worth of stock mm. and 10 full-time staff members. So it was a big kind of business. It was, it was really, a serious business. Yeah, it was a serious business. A couple of things happened. Um, rent was going up like at 5% per annum. So by the time I was finishing my lease, it was almost at like 30%. I saw retail sales declined. I also was not loving it. Mm. I wasn't loving having to stand in front, like in the middle of a really busy shop and try and work with a bride through wedding stationery and things like that. And I also saw that my current branding was actually damaging my business. So we were this bright hot pink shop and I always picked the hot pink because I figured most of my clients were females. They'd be driving down Oxford Street and they'll be freaking out because it's busy and like, how do I find this place? Oh, it's just a pink shop. It's just a pink shop. Mm -hmm. And you see the colour and you knew instantly you're in the right and place. And it was pink. It was, it was pink. pink. Yeah. <laughs> it was like that yeah, pink. Yeah, hot pink. Yeah. yeah. You but couldn't miss it. What happened is that people then, it became the cheap, cheerful brand. Yeah. Yes, we were cheerful and we were very helpful and approachable, but we were not cheap. Mm. So there was this disconnect happening. So I was either going to have to, I negotiated with my landlord and said, you know, and this is a landlord I'd been paying for 15 plus years and I had three premises off him as well. So mm -hmm. I had the big shop, but I had behind workshop as well. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you could drop my rent by a certain amount of money for the next like eight, nine months, I can survive it and then we can reassess it. And he was like, nah. And I was like, okay. See was that you? like taking like a bullet? Um, not so much a bullet. It was like, okay, you're showing me who you are and I need to accept it. Yeah. So I need to do something about it. So I did something that was very against my character. I stopped paying my rent. Oh. Yeah. I stopped paying my rent and went into arrears because I had pre-warned him that I was struggling. Yeah. And I needed some help from him and he just was not willing to go with it. So I was like, okay. And I had an account, so we had a bit of a talk about it. So the money wasn't not, not being there, it was there, it was tucked mm. away, he just wasn't getting it. Mm. And then I just, and even when I cut my lease and moved out, mm -hmm. I paid him off at the most ridiculous, petty Sweet. amount and dragged it right out. <laughs> <to> <laughs> and good for you. So good. <laughs> and you know what, my shop is still empty. Is it? It's still sitting there empty. Wow. Yeah. Vandalised. It looks like shit. Wow. Whole, yeah, it's really sad to see, actually. It is sad yeah. to see. So I had to make that decision. Mm. I had to let a lot of my staff go. I kept two of my staff members. So Kelly, my production manager, has been with me for 15 years, and Anna, my graphic designer, has been with me for six. So those two stayed with me. Um, they put 100% blind faith in me that I was going to be okay, that we were going to be okay, and they just, like, they just... Yeah, trusted it. And we moved into this little design studio on Edward Street, Perth. So I don't work from home. I have a separate spot. And I wanted to make it feel like you were coming in for a couture wedding dress, but 
for stationery. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get back to the one-on-one -on -one approach. I mm -hmm. wanted the creative activity to come back. I wanted my staff to work in an environment with windows and plants and not in the back of a black cupboard, mm -hmm. you know, because that's pretty much what they were working in. Mm -hmm. A bit more work-life balance. And those first two years up until COVID hit, pretty much until the beginning of 2020, were brutal. Mm. They were brutal. They took every ounce of previous experience, gut determination, like everything I had to mm. get through those two years to, yeah. Because it was, even though we'd worked out figures and made a plan and everything, we totally did not anticipate the bottom falling out, basically. It was like starting yeah. from scratch again. Yeah. But I just knew how to do it quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. And hence Instagram. And hence Instagram. Yeah. Hence why I ended up with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, talk to us about... That journey, so by the then. time I got to you, I'd already done. You'd done a lot. I had already done two workshops yeah. with two different types of people, and I still, it was not. I just couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Like I just couldn't fucking get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? Well, I don't get it. And my staff are younger than me as well. Like my staff are in their thirties, and I'm like, why can't you do this for me? <laughs> this is your thing. And they're like, nah, we don't want to do it. Like my staff are complete introverts. Um, they weren't even interested in it. So like, I'm gonna have to figure it out. Yeah. Because I know that. Um, in our wedding, like our wedding clients are a fresh batch every year and they stay at 28 to 35 pretty much. I'm going to get older, but they're not. So I have to be where they're going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's on Instagram. And you just embraced it. Yeah, so I came to you. It was when I came to you, did your first workshop. I walked away and went, yeah, okay, I'm getting it now. Yeah. Like I completely get it. And it all just kind of started to sit in. And then I fucking love it. Yeah, you I do. I totally love it. Yeah. I seriously do. Yeah. yeah. And it's so oh, sorry, nice I to see. With a sensor badge. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's my event. You never have to come with us. When people in front of me are like, oh, sorry, I swore. I'm like, have we met? <laughs> we almost had a swear jar at one of your last events. Yeah, literally. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. That was fun. Um, um, okay, so hang on. Yes. So then you were in the social club membership. Yeah. How long were you in the membership before you decided to do plus? And what made you decide to do plus why did you feel like you if you were loving it and enjoying it getting customers getting results why did you feel like you had to do the deeper program i always feel like there's another level yeah i always feel that you have to keep evolving there's always a better way to do something and you just need to be open to it. you need to try it there's a very much a whole my philosophy is very much a kind of You've got to try it and see if it works. Like test and measure, test and measure. People often are too afraid to do something because they've already seen it failing before they do it. Mm. And they make up their mind without the real facts or the real answers. So for me, I was part of the social club membership, literally I think the minute you started it, after I'd done the two courses with you. Mm -hmm. Because we all know we get busy working our businesses we forget what we have to do so they're really great memory joggers mm. and i like being kept up to date with things yeah as well like you're instantly telling us what's going on how to do it and sometimes i'm like how do i do that and then i go oh yeah it's in that email and then off i go i don't watch your webinars but i generally read your email <laughs> <laughs> you're a little high voltage babe <laughs> i am yeah. i am no that's yeah. fine but i generally read them on the couch at night good and then i keep them as references when i need them yay i need to go back to something I swear and, the emails yeah. make more sense than when I'm blabbering on the screen, so I that's think fine. People absorb information in different yeah. ways, don't they? Totally. And then when the Social Club Plus came up, um, because it was during COVID as well, mm. so most of our business pretty much on that Friday when the government decided to stop the weddings hard. and events, it just bombed out. Yeah. Um, but I, what I liked yeah. about Lala during COVID, like, you did not stop. No. You showed up. You showed up on stories. You sh like the day you had to, I feel emotional saying this, yeah. you had to get rid of your staff. Oh, and it makes me cry. I know. <laughs> and you shared yeah. it. And it was like fucking brutal watching this. But it was honest. Yeah. And it brought so many, I think it brought so many people comfort because obviously I know what I was going through at the time. Just to be like, oh, okay, someone I admire is, fucking world is falling apart but yeah. all right she's still going so i'll have to keep going yeah 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 it was it was brutal yeah and like you said it's not always about the highlight reel no it's really important to show the other side of it you know do you think in your entire experience in business that's been the hardest thing do you think covid was the hardest just that for us it was almost like a three four week window that was really difficult mm. until I did a pivot that just flipped it all mm. on its head and then that was, you know, no looking back now. Mm. So, yeah, but that particular day, I had been pre-warning our staff. So I went to New York in 2000 and 
19 and um, sat with a bigger group of worldwide stationers and I was the only Australian person that went there. So I had been talking to everyone in New York and um, in the UK and they were telling me what was going on. Mm. So I kind of saw it coming and been briefing my staff, but they kind of just rolled their eyes at me and was like, you're being a bit melodramatic, babe. But we all yeah. kind of did. Yeah, it was like, a bit surreal, wasn't it? It was sort of like, mm. oh, do you get caught up in hype or, yeah. or not or what? And mm. yeah, well, they yeah. were right. <laughs> yeah, and then when they started seeing all the cancellations and the phone calls coming through and then a whole yeah. bunch of print work just sitting there with no payment and yeah. everything and then me saying to them, I'm sorry, that's it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring you back into work and they were like, and Kelly who'd been with me for 15 years doesn't know how to do any other job. She only knows what she does for me. She hasn't had to go and work for anyone else or anything mm. like that. So to say, look, I'm sorry and I can't promise you yeah, no. work again. Yeah, or yeah, it's hard. there's going to be anything left at the end of it. There's yeah. one thing when you're responsible for yourself, but when you're it's responsible yeah. for other people, it's a different kind of pressure. Yeah. And, you know, you see success and growth in businesses, hiring staff and expanding, but then you got somebody else to think about and it, it does change your mentality. I was there when she got married. I was there when Jackson was born. Mm. You know, I helped Anna buy her house. Mm. Yeah, all of those sort of things. It's crazy. Yeah. So... Yeah. Lala had Lala design when she applied to do the Social Club Plus program. And when you apply to do the program, you have to fill out a brief because I have to know that really you're ready for the program. And in the brief, it says like, what are your goals and what are you hoping to achieve and blah, blah, blah. And nothing, <laughs> nothing in the brief matched Lala's business. And I was like, okay, this is not about brides anymore. So Lala, said so throughout COVID when she said that she'd pivoted started coaching and obviously like you should have done it a thousand years ago but when we started the program in our first session what did I say to you yeah I had filled out and did all my homework ready for our little <laughs> meeting all for Lala design she's like right that five-year goal of yours of doing business mentoring coaching we're going to do it now and she literally just went shut up <laughs> And that was it. I, it was like I was sitting in my chair and went, fuck, okay, we're doing it. I was like, yeah. this, we're actually not going to yeah. do this program yeah. about La La Design. That's yeah. not what we're going to do. We're going to do La La for business. Yeah. And, and we did it. it came up. Yeah. yeah. I already had the name pegged and put away, ready to go. It mm. just got expedited. Yeah. yeah. And it's so cool. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Because yeah. it's like when you hit that right thing that people want from you that you are delivering and you just explode. And that's what's happened. You've just exploded. On both pages as well, because yeah. it means that I'm not, everything that I'm posting on Lala for design is about weddings and brides and it's very much for them and that's what I talk about. And then everything that everything else I talk about on Lala for business, which is about business and my personal things or, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's and a business good, branding yeah. too. Absolutely. Yeah. So I yeah. think this is something that a lot of mm. business owners struggle. You start an Instagram account um, you gather an audience, you have an offering, and then you start another business or you have another direction and you're trying to do both on the same account. Guys, it does not work. You're gonna struggle to grow, you're gonna struggle to think of what to post because you're trying to speak to two people. So if anyone else is in that same position right now and you're trying to make the decision whether to start a new account, if your audience is different, your offering is different, then yeah, as soon as you start that new account, everything will become easier on both accounts. And I know it can be a bit, a bit overwhelming to go like, shit, I'm trying to manage one account. I can't even imagine having two. But if you have a clear strategy for two accounts, it's actually easier mm -hmm. than trying to work out how to serve two people with two different uh, pain points and two different prob problems on one account. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally huge. Um, so why did you pick this program over other programs? There wasn't any other programs, Brooke. Yeah, there wasn't. <laughs> I know there wasn't because this is, I created the program for Plus based on where I was um, a little while ago and I didn't know how to grow and expand. And there just, there wasn't anyone that was teaching you how to use Instagram to grow and expand. There was, you know, little bits and pieces here and there, but not a real in-depth how to integrate Instagram into the rest of your business. Like once you acknowledge that this platform is working for you and it's getting you sales and you understand the basics of the platform, you need a you go up it to a different level yeah. and it's got to integrate with every single system and procedure in your business and that 
really was what this program was about. Packaging all of the things that I've learned that worked and not all the things I wasted money on, which there was a lot of them. There's a lot of money and a lot of things. The other deciding factor as well is that there was trust built between us already mm, and open communication. True. And I always knew that you were going to over deliver on whatever it is that you chose to do. Thank so, you. yeah, absolutely. And that you would just be honest. Did you no watch bullshit. the videos in Plus? On the, like the Sunday morning, like yes. this, yeah. Okay, good. I was on the couch and Sunday with my earbuds on. <laughs> Just with checking. With my little pad ready for my homework. Because you don't get emails in plus. Yeah, you have you to have watch, to watch the, the videos. Yeah. Yeah. But you're See, a lot more direct and to the point there. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so how have you used it with your business then? Oh, wow. Okay. It's a non-negotiable part of our business. So I brought in a new staff member recently, Steph, who's just joined us for our business branding part of our business. So she is solely purpose for Lala, Yay. the business. So that's the great. first new staff member yeah. after letting everyone go? Uh, no, I actually took on Courtney for packing and wedding planners because mm -hmm. that was where we did another pivot as well, thanks to Christy, your social voice, um, for helping Hi, me Christy. out yeah, with Facebook ads. Oh, so that we, was yeah. after the conference where I swore a lot. Yes. Yeah, I remember yes. that. <laughs> yeah, so yes. we um, had a wedding planner we've had for about five years or so and so with the help of Facebook ads with your social voice, we dropped some money into that and that just gave us a great income and it's Amazing. now just exploding. Um, so Courtney came on to pack all of those and we now have to bring, Courtney's back to go back to study so we're now bringing on someone that's almost like two, three days to deal with just website orders. Yeah, And cool. then Steph has joined me for basically Lala for business. So she is working with me on my business branding needs for my clients, but also like today she's sitting there and she's doing up um, an onboarding document for branding clients, uh, my packages for mentoring and everything, um, and all of my social media graphics that I will mm. use on that page. And Anna will still take care of the wedding part of it. So she does the graphics for that. So we spend, a, I invest more in the visuals mm. because that's almost what I'm selling in both those businesses is the visuals of what I do mm -hmm. into that. So yeah, and now that's part of our weekly work schedule. And how many of your clients would you say come through Insta? We had just done our spreadsheet for 2020 mm. and we're up to 78% yeah, shit. of our clients from Instagram. That's huge. It used to previously be um, referrals and expos, yeah. Yeah. Back in wow. the day. Isn't that crazy? Ads in magazines. For something <laughs> yeah. that you would have spent so much money on previously, now it costs you nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, amazing. Yeah. Um, um, all right, so talk to me about the game-changing strategies from Insta. Like, talk to me about La La Design and something that is a non-negotiable on that Instagram account, and then talk to me about now La La for business. Ooh, La La Design, um, oh, I think of it in two senses. I use the... I use my feed as a gallery of work, so I use it so that people can see what we do. So we find that a lot of planners and people like that will use it to show their clients. So mm -hmm. it keeps us kind of fresh and up to date, way quicker than what we can get it up on our website. Mm. Um, and then obviously people can, you know, save it and all those sort of things. So I love seeing all the statistics behind it as well. So you're mm -hmm. seeing what people are gravitating towards and what they're saving. So it kind of tells us where the trends are at a little bit. So how often do you check that? So you're checking for saves using your yeah, insights? Yeah, I do a weekly look through. Does so everyone do that do you look at how many people are saving your posts and, and what they're saving stuff, yeah. yeah it's a it's a huge indicator of what people want yeah and people say to me all the time i don't know what to post well go and have a look go and have a look at what people are saving and sharing do more of that it's right there in front of you it's right there yeah. in front of you just don't look at it no can I do a lesson on it okay <laughs> yeah, yeah a lot of the time it's not what you think Mm. So we use those insights to plan what the next lot of the feed is going to look like mm. when we're designing invites and stationery. So do you pre-plan La La Design a week ahead? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We're trying to get it to more than that, but at the moment it's working on a weekly basis. Week is fine. Yeah. We and do I use social the stories club to just weekly. have some fun with. Yeah. The stories are great for just interacting, showing what's behind the scenes, some real part of the business and everything, because people really obviously resonate with that. Yeah. And La La for business. Right. Okay. I haven't quite got my feed kind of rolling very well, but I took the pressure off and just put, I'm only going to put up value on that. 
So I did some videos with my accountant, Michelle, which were awesome. Mm. They were, had great feedback on those. And then I use it. They to were just, IGTVs, IGTVs, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. And then I just use my stories to just chat to people about what happens in my day with things that are relevant. And the response is incredible. Yeah. Like the instant communication DMs and everything are just amazing. And do you know what you do as well? Um, you show up at the same time every day. Yeah. So much, yeah. Lala makes her coffee in the morning <laughs> in her kitchen and chats. And it's like nice, like when I want to open my Instagram account I'm like oh what's Lala got to say to start the day like you know it's there and your followers start to realize okay mm -hmm. I, I can rely on turning to like turning on a TV show that's on at the same time every day so it's that consistency which has made such a big difference since you started like in the six weeks of the program Lala opened her account and had 500 followers and like good followers that were yeah, real people real yeah. people massive engagement because you were consistent. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't really know what you were doing yet because it no. takes some time <laughs> to like build it up because like we've just said, you can only check your shares and saves once you've got content there, right? You can't do that when there's nothing there. So you've got to put yourself out there for a little while and see what people are resonating with, but you've just got to do it consistently. 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 Yeah. yeah and everything. that's what you did. Yeah. And are still doing. Yeah. I actually really enjoy my morning coffee talks. It's like, you know, I'm meeting you for a coffee in the morning. That, okay. that's, how, that's what it feels yeah. like. I'm like, oh, I'll make my coffee too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. My husband did say to me, just don't put the coffee machine on because it's too noisy when you're talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, babe, got it. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, babe. Yeah. Cute. I love that. Okay. So what's something that you've achieved and an impact it's made professionally and personally? Oh, God, that's a big A lot list. of things. Yeah. Yeah, if we made it recently, I think that my proudest achievement is actually keeping my business and my team together over this period of time because I've mm. seen a lot of other people, not just in Perth, but you know, worldwide, my other friends at a station is mainly some of my friends in Perth in the industry who just lay down and let it roll over them mm. and they just didn't come out of it and they've had businesses as long as me mm. and I've seen the struggle wow. because, yeah, and I'm glad. I'm proud of myself for fighting, like for fighting totally. so hard for it. Yeah. I'd, you kept me going through that because oh, it got real shit. Yeah. It got yeah. real shit yeah, for like me professionally and personally. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but as well as losing my business, I lost my sister during COVID, which was horrendous, yeah. horrendous. And it was on a Wednesday and the social club webinar is on a Wednesday. So that was almost tougher than the one that I did when I was really sick. But then I look at you guys and I look at people like Lala and you're showing up and I just think, well, I have a responsibility. I'm, I'm there to serve. So you never know when you're showing up on Instagram who you're inspiring. Yeah. You really don't. So when you're having a shit day, just know that there's someone having a worse day always always someone having a worst day mm. cool yeah all right so yes what's next i was like what's that answer gonna be what's next wow okay um I got a what haven't you done oh this is the shit i haven't done <laughs> you've done so much. so much yeah no this time i um would love to get back to my charity work i haven't okay. done any like between 20. Okay. so um and that's something that i do all the time and i haven't done anything so 2021 I hang 2021. on 2021 but we're only like 14 days in. i know but like it's oh, something that it's pressure. usually ingrained in part of my life <laughs> and i just need to make a plan for that okay so that's one thing um i feel that i'm going to be expanding again so yeah. i would like to i've made a promise to myself that the next time I move into a business business premises, I'm going to own that bastard. Ooh. Like, I'm going to own it. I'm not going to pay rent to someone. That's good. Yeah. 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 And I wish someone had told me that at the beginning when I started so many years ago. Buy your own bloody building and pay your own, like, mortgage. Don't pay rent. Yeah. Did but, it ever come up? Nah. Like, did you ever try? No, because I did it completely on my own with yeah. no financial help and I don't have family or anything so and I didn't have a supportive husband back then as I do now. <laughs> <laughs> what so, happened yeah. with you? Something ha like a website or you had some crazy bill for something? 
Do you remember that? What was it? I know uh, you for too long now. Was and it, it my was, website? Was it your website? Yeah, so it was about a $40,000 website bill yeah. and they didn't deliver on the no. website, so I took them to court. And then I took the second company to court as well. Yeah, it was a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, it was a I nightmare. remember that. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And now we just whip them up. <laughs> well, now we have the right people, don't you? Yeah. Like you start to know who you're going to engage with straight away, like the red flags are there, move on, or yes, that's what you're going to... Would you say yeah. that's like the most costly mistake in your business yeah, today? Yeah, because what happened at the time that I was building that website, there was no other website in the world that you could buy wedding stationery online. Yeah, like right. minted and all of that was not around. And that's what this site was being built for. And if and then it took, it was two years that I bullied, like battled with this It company. went on for a long it went time. went on for a really long time. Yeah. I crawled under a rock and was like, yeah, I'm it was fucking, awful. I'm done. Um, and then I was like, no, I'm not done. <laughs> and then went to the fight. In the meantime, fighting with them, engaged someone else who I thought was a friend as well, which made it worse. We did exactly the same thing. So I went through it twice. Yeah. And by the time I lifted my head out, there was, you could just order invites online everywhere. So it mm. just was like, I missed the mark completely. But I just had to kind of keep going. Yeah, you just have to go, but that's the way it is. And I'm not going to give my energy to all that shit that went, it's been and done. What did I learn from it? Move on and keep going. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you just won't survive it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's got to be your attitude to everything, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's life. It's yeah. how life attitude is. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Well, I think Lala was a great lady to finish on today. Ah. Thank you, Lala. <laughs> My pleasure. That was amazing. So where can everyone find you? Oh, right. Okay. Um, so it depends where you want to be. If you're into wedding stationery, mm -hmm. Lala Design Perth. If you're into business coaching and business branding and just my general coffee chats, that is La La for Business. Mm -hmm. And I also have the Creative Republic Perth, which sells modern, photo modern photographic backdrops. If you want to buy backdrops to do your own product photography with your phone and camera. Amazing. So, yeah. But I generally hang out on La La for Business the most. That's where you're going to see this. Yeah. Yeah. That in the morning <laughs> with a coffee. So when you're making your coffee on Monday... What day is it today? Thursday, yeah. Friday, tomorrow. When <laughs> you're making your coffee tomorrow, tune in to oh, Lala. Morning, it's not always a pretty sight. <laughs> it is a pretty sight. I swear, sometimes they So Lala looks like this, like, at all times. <laughs> at all times. Like, I've known you for way too long. I should have seen you ugly by now. <laughs> Never have. We can organise that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll arrange that. Yeah. So thank you so My much. My pleasure.